Hey, I'm Neve. I'm 17 and I've got Tourette's syndrome. This is a few frequently asked questions that I get about Tourette's. What is Tourette's? Tourette's is a neurological condition, meaning it's in the brain. Tourette's is one of many tic disorders, meaning it's a condition that causes people to have tics. Tics are involuntary movements or sounds, meaning I make movements and noises that are out of my control. What is the criteria to get diagnosed with Tourette's? So you have to have at least two motor tics, which are involuntary movements, and one vocal tic, which is involuntary noises or sounds, and you have to have had them for at least 12 months. You also have to have developed these tics before the age of 18. However, I do know a few people who have adult onset Tourette's, meaning their tics started after they turned 18. When did your tics start? So my tics started in September 2020, so when I'm filming this, I've had tics for about two and a half years. I was 14 when my tics started, I'm 17 now. What's your most common tic? My most common motor tics are the neck jerks and the little facial tics that I have. My most common vocal tic is the little hiccup sound that I do quite often. My most common complex vocal tic at the moment is probably mummy. What's the difference between simple and complex tics? So a simple motor tic would be the neck jerks that I'm doing, the little facial twitches. Basically short repetitive tics that only involve one muscle group. A complex motor tic would be things like clapping your hands, jumping up and down. People tend to think that I'm faking it when I have complex motor tics because they look more thought out and less involuntary. The only thing I can tell you is they are still involuntary, they are just more complex. A simple vocal tic would be my little hiccup sound or grunts like clearing of the throat, um, sniff noises and complex vocal tics would be things like saying words and phrases. <laughs> Again, people tell me I'm faking when I have complex vocal tics because people just can't seem to get their head around the fact that something so complicated can be involuntary. Do tics hurt? So as a general rule, tics don't hurt. Like the little neck jerks that I'm doing, the vocal tics don't hurt at all. However, there are some specific tics that do hurt. For example, self-injurious tics. A self-injurious tic is a tic that directly harms me. For example, um, my tic might punch my chest. That's my most common self-injurious tic. My tic will kind of hit my collarbone. So I do have a lot of motor tics, movement tics, that are self-injurious, um, slapping tics, scratching tics, hitting tics. Vocal tics don't really hurt unless it's been going on for ages. Like if I have a throat clearing tick <clears throat> and I've been doing it for, you know, hours on end, that will end up um, straining my throat. What's your least favourite tick? If you um, listen to my answer to the last question, you'll probably be able to guess. My least favourite ticks are the self-injurious ones. Do you know when you're going to tick? Most of the time, yes. I get something called a premonitory urge which is like the sensation that you get before the involuntary movement or sound. For example, sometimes I feel this weird sensation. It's like electricity uh, running down my arm and then my arm will tick. Or I feel the electricity coming up my spine and then I have a big neck jerk. My little ticks, the ones that I do all the time, I don't get a premonitory urge for those. I just sort of have a constant weird feeling in my neck. It never really goes away. But I'm so used to it now that if I don't think about it, then I don't even feel it. Do you know what your tick is going to do or say before you tick it? The short answer is no. But as I just said, if I feel the premonitory urge coming down my arm, I know that the tick is going to be in my arm. But I don't know what it's going to do. <laughs> are ticks what you're thinking? Absolutely not. So there are a few times where, coincidentally, my tick has said something that I actually believe, or I know, or I think. But majority of the time, ticks are absolute rubbish. I have some observational ticks, which means that they <clears throat> relate to the situation that I'm in or relate to my surroundings. For example, if I see someone with bright blue hair, my ticks might then comment on their blue hair. I'm not thinking to myself about their blue hair, but subconsciously I have seen them. Sometimes my ticks do tick about things that I have seen. <laughs> Why do so many people with Tourette's? have the same ticks as each other. So on TikTok, my main platform, I follow a lot of people with Tourette's 
in my opinion the Tourette's community is really supportive but a lot of us do have the same if not very similar tics, mainly vocal tics. This is due to something called echolalia. Echolalia is derived from two Greek words, echo and lalia. Echo meaning to repeat and lalia meaning to speak. Echolalia is very common in people with Tourette's. For example, if I hear something on the television, my tick might then repeat what I've heard. Same goes for if I hear someone speaking. So if I watch a video of someone with Tourette's syndrome, or any tick disorder for that matter, and they are frequently ticking a few words, for example, peas. I hear them ticking the word peas. My echolalia might then repeat the word peas. This doesn't mean I'm copying them. This is just part of Tourette's syndrome. So yeah, that's why a lot of creators with ticks or Tourette's have the same vocal ticks. Is Tourette's the swearing disease? No. So I think <clears throat> in the media, Tourette's is most well known for making people swear. When in reality, it's actually only 10 to 15% of people with Tourette's have the swearing tick. The swearing tick is called coprolalia, again derived from two Greek words, copro, meaning inappropriate or obscene, and lalia, meaning to speak. So coprolalia isn't just swearing, it can be anything that you perceive to be socially inappropriate. For example, if a five-year-old has Tourette's syndrome, and in their head the word poo, is an inappropriate word. If they ticked the word poo, that would also be classed as coprolalia. Another time that someone might <clears throat> tick a swear word is echolalia again. If I'm around someone who's swearing a lot, my tick might pick up on that and repeat <clears throat> what I heard them saying. Is it okay to laugh at people's ticks? I'd always say ask the person first, but I'll talk from personal experience. You know, my opinion isn't everyone's opinion, but I will explain how I feel about it. If I say something funny, don't try not to laugh and end up, you know, sniggering behind my back. I'd rather you just laugh, because a lot of the time I find my own tics funny, so I will laugh along with them. It doesn't bother me if you also laugh. You know, all my friends and family know that if I say something funny, they are allowed to laugh. However, I wouldn't appreciate it. Well, actually, I'd find it <clears throat> very disrespectful. If, for example, I had a self-injurious tic, um, I hit myself, and then someone laughs. So it really depends on the tick as to whether I'm okay with you laughing or not. But everyone with Tourette's is different. So if you're not sure, I'd just suggest asking them. So I think I've gone over all my most frequently asked questions. Hopefully the comments are on on this video, sometimes they get disabled. If they are on and you've got any other questions, feel free to ask. I hope this cleared up some misconceptions. Thank you so much for watching, please like and subscribe and if you have any other video ideas that you'd like to see also drop them in the comments and if the comments are disabled then you can comment on my TikTok. It's the same username as YouTube, Neve ticks a lot. Thank you for watching, <laughs> bye!